Cheers, everybody. We are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. We're feeling mighty patriotic this week, and we are glad that you guys joined us. We've got a fighting. Coo-coo! I America. Hate not, I you don't understand that's an eagle at all. Yeah, nope. it sounds like a crow. It sounds it like does. a crow. <laughs> So we are back with you guys again. Happy Fourth of July! I know it was a couple of days ago, but we're we're celebrating with you guys today. Um, USA. Oh, uh, TJ's wearing. Damn, one of us should have worn white because we would have been red, white, and blue. This is more oh, garnet. Gold. It's more garnet. More garnet and gold. Yeah. Um, we have an exciting episode planned for you guys tonight. We'll see how much of it we uh, get to, or if you think it's exciting or not. But before we do that, we appreciate you guys tuning in. If you are on social media, if you could go follow and like and. Subscribe just about everywhere that you can find Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, iTunes, YouTube. It's all bourbon on a budget. Go check it out. We appreciate the engagement. Ben does still have a MySpace up. And a live journal. Follow along. (laughs) And an aim. If you're on any of those platforms, please reach out to Ben because he's the only one. Bourbon on a budget at AOL.com. Please (laughs) email us. We were looking at starting um, OnlyFans as well. Ben's going to run oh that account boy. for us. Yeah, that's, it's that's called all. Only Bourbons. It's only Ben's project. <laughs> um, we've got an exciting show. Like I said, we are celebrating the 4th of July with some different bourbons, maybe a little bourbon tournament. There's no, uh, no nothing more American than pitting things that we love against each other. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, got some America. patriotic patriotic whiskeys. Some patriotic history to talk about, some bourbon history to talk about a little bit, the blend of those two. Um, see what I did there with blend. And our favorite segment, Pursuits and Purchases at the very end of the show, and then we'll talk about what we're reviewing. A little second chance for a review um, for uh, Benethy over there. Uh, before we do any of that, a couple of weeks ago, we forgot to talk about it because Elliot was on the other night, the other week. Yes. Um, Ben and I went to a bourbon festival. It was a bourbon barbecue and beer festival here in Tampa, Florida. We invited yes. Brendan and he said, no, yeah, yeah. And did not come down for it. Basically. Um, so Ben, sure. we had a lot of fun at the bourbon festival, um, killer sunburns, but uh, for me at least tell the people, hat. tell the people about the bourbon festival. Yeah. So the bourbon festival was June 8th. Ninth, it's early June time. So One almost the, a month ago at this point. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, but what was great about it was that it was kind of like the first big outdoor event festival in Tampa, you know, since all the lockdowns. And so there was a good turnout. And at this festival, it was one where you pay a general admission price. Uh, you can get in. They give you a sampling glass, and then you go to. A bunch of different booths. Everyone's set up with either, you know, bourbon or beer. Um, and then, of course, there's some barbecue booths around. And you just walk up, put your glass out and be like, hey, I want to try that bourbon or I want to try that beer. And it's all included in the price. And I think we paid we paid uh, an additional like 20 bucks to be in the VIP area. So I think that was like 60 to 65 bucks. And that came with a plate of food and then your selection of like more rare beer or bourbon, right? Which was good, but you know, nothing too crazy for like 65 bucks. And then you also got to try everything else for free. So everything's included. Um, a lot of the major distillers are there. Wild Turkey was there. Uh, Elijah Craig, Horse Soldier, Garrison Brothers. Um, High Elijah, West had uh, some. Elijah Craig himself was there? Himself, yes. Wow. He was there. Uh, Sir Elijah. And uh, it was a good time. We got to try a lot of stuff that, you know, we knew about. And then a lot of things that we don't, you know, necessarily want to go and buy whole bottles of, but, you know, kind of sample them. So a good turnout, definitely worth the 50 or 60 bucks to go and sample, you know, literally there was 50 to 60 bourbons there. And, you know, probably at least, at least that many of, of, of beer, you know, so you all sit down and go kind of walk around hanging out. I'd say more beer um, than, than bourbon and um maybe more bourbons than that maybe more than 50 to 60 i mean that one tent that lady had just went like 15 herself you know another more crazy. Yeah, yeah yeah but like you know so like there was a um horse soldier tent they had all three of theirs they there was a um a garrison brothers tent they had three or four of theirs um makers you know, have their own tent have makers four or five of them 
Yeah, makers. I mean, Jim Beam, just everything you could think of. Uh, some cool things that we got to try. We tried a Kentucky Owl Confiscated, uh, kind mm -hmm. of an expensive bottle, a hundred dollar bottle. Not super hard to find. You can find that at a lot of places, but uh, hundred dollar bottle. Hate, people hate on that bottle because it's a hundred dollars. I got it for like eighty five. I was on sale, and I thought it was delightful. It was the uh, it was the first thing we had, and so that maybe maybe somewhat tainted by the fact that I was sweating my tail off the rest of the day. It was one of the better things I thought that we had that day. I thought it was really good, a lot of sweetness to it. Um, and again, it was before we were like super super hot or slosh or anything like that. But uh, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, ben really liked uh, a horse soldier barrel. TJ, your uh, mic is clipping really bad. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. I thought it was my headphones at first, and I saw you better, mute Ben, and it has a better mute. Uh, yeah, yeah, better now. Yes, much better now. Sounds good. All right. yeah. yeah, it was getting like. I'll a say. I'll say all that again. I'll yeah. say all that again. Um, we were able to get some stuff like not super rare, but we were able to uh, try. Kentucky Owl confiscated, right? And I know that Brendan was talking about that. That bottle gets a little bit of a, a little bit of hate. Um, about a hundred dollars, you can find it usually at ABC. It's behind the show, behind the counter. But uh, again, it was the first thing we had, and so maybe a little bit influenced by the fact that it was, you know, cooler, not uh, not so late in the day, and dying of heat. But I thought it was really good. I thought it was that was fun. Ben had a horse soldier or barrel streak that he really really liked. The Garrison yes. Brothers tent um, was fantastic, yes. um, and so horse, Bourbon, horse soldiers would have been a good one for today, uh, given its its background and and that's yeah. uh, associated with. Veterans. They weren't on the budget, and from what I can find, I think uh, every bottle is like fifty bucks. Yeah, I was gonna say their entry point one. I think is about forty five because I checked it out at ABC the other day for yeah. this this episode. I was like, eh, their we'll barrel see. proof one though is great. Okay. It is, great. But it's expensive. It is. That went back twice. That went back twice. So oh, really? um, if yes. you had something you really back liked, you could go grab oh. more of it. We also yeah. grabbed a bunch of, we got a good amount of beer as well. Mm -hmm. So you, so you mix. Stuff. That's good. Yeah. You guys looked uh, amazing rough on the picture. <laughs> we definitely looked amazing. Um, so, yeah. but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was easily worth the 60 bucks we spent. A oh, bunch of trying, you know, a lot of, we were able to split a ton. It was outside, but easily worth the 60 bucks, right? Uh, fair warning though, go, you know, take your time. You know, there's no rush of those festivals, you know, take, you know, take your time. You know, the VIP ticket that we had got us in two hours early before the event started. And before Ooh. the two hours was up, some guys, you know, vomited in a bush on the side of the uh, festival. I his, his name is that. TJ, Just and thank relax. you for the invite. Just I forgot relax. about that, and I did take a video of it, so I'll have to show you guys that later. <laughs> yeah, before even the event started. You took a video this poor guy there is having a tough time. And in the I'm sun, sure that his boiling yeah. lava. Great. Um so no, B Bourbon Festival was great. I'd love to go with Brendan one day, but we'll see if we can be good enough friends um to hang out at some point in my life. Um, we oh, had no. barbecue and bourbon up here not that long ago. Ben, I'm sorry, Brendan took me to a barn um, to eat at. So it was called the Red Shed, not a barn. It was a oh, shed. It took me. Oh, okay, worse. He took me to a shed. Um, and my shed. and my accountant was playing uh, guitar on a Saturday night uh, at the concert there. So. Shout out to the accountant. He listened. What was, happens in Tallahassee? You guys stay, are doing stays, some weird stuff up there. It stays up there. You'll find out Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Did I tell you that, Brendan? Ben's coming up. We got to do. I, go. he, I want the best also, of the bourbon. Yeah, he also needs a couch to sleep on. So one for me and one for the kids. Uh, I will take care. you guys out for pull, bourbon. Uh, pull one couch, out for me, Brendan. Couch, uh, not so much. <laughs> uh, a spot for an air mattress is fine for Ben. Then put um, me in the nursery. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming kids, love it. Yeah, you can sleep. No, my kids aren't coming. Gosh, that sounds terrible. Um, all right, some USA, some America, some. Whiskey, America. bourbon. This this segment, Brendan writes for a living, so this is just so eloquently put. Bourbon, America's native spirit. I mean, that's definitely it. not something that I came up with. That's fine, though. Um, Scott so, is our native spirit. So um, we picked four different bourbons for this, and we're going to talk about them in just a minute. We picked four different bourbons for this. We could have gone with different things. We, there are some things that have America in the name, have American whiskey in the name. 
the way we did it was the true American way. We were cheap and we went with what we had on hand and we no bourbon was purchased in the making of this episode. So before we get to that, talk to us about bourbon, Brendan, please. Ooh, bourbon, Brendan, America's native spirit. I mean, you guys are here because you love bourbon. If you're listening, if you're watching, you know the deal. We've given you a lot of history lessons over the years. But just to tie it in while we're talking, you know, we're trying to tie in July 4th and, and bourbon. Uh, bourbon is America's native spirit, like like legally, like it's it, the government has dubbed it as such. In 1964, uh, Act of Congress declared bourbon as "quote unquote" America's native spirit uh, by celebrating the family heritage, tradition, um, all the stuff that that you know when they talk about deep rooted American legacy. That's what they talk about with with bourbon, uh, and so that's why the United States dubbed it as such. Uh, so to celebrate America's birthday, we'll partake in drinking uh, four examples of America's native spirit. Uh, and they all have some patriotic themes, as TJ said. Do you want me to roll them out there one at a time, fellas? How do we want to do this? Yeah, we've got a little competition going on. Ben just tried to say something, but I think he was on mute. Um, oh, that's a damn shame. But um, we – yeah, let's talk about it. I wish I had the bottle of the fourth one, the one that you sent up, because I do have the, the other three, and I think it'd make kind of – I have the one that I sent up, and I can send it to you. If, oh, you want to put them all side by side. Never I mind. just want to take a picture, you know, and now I, I can't. So Photoshop. Anyway. Photoshop. Yeah, probably not. Um, so talk to us about the, I'll just, yeah, nah, I won't. Talk to us about these four different bourbons, Brandon. Okay. All right. So let's start off uh, with one that we will be reviewing on Thursday, Eagle Rare, uh, you know, American Bald Eagle. <sighs> yeah, there we go. That a boy. Uh, it is, <laughs> God, even you can see Super this little, rare. if you can see on the video, is that, can you guys see that there? It's a little American eagle on the uh, on the little cap there. So yeah, very patriotic. America's bird. Uh, did you guys know that the American eagle, the bald eagle, is kind of stupid? You're stupid, Brendan. No, it's yeah. kind of like it's don't, just, it's like don't a, talk. This is a Fourth of July podcast. Did you know, I'm national, informative. Did you know America's national bird's an idiot? Did you know, did you <laughs> know that the White House actually sucks <laughs> and the Statue of Liberty's a moron? <laughs> what the crap? Did you know? <laughs> I think Ben Franklin wanted a turkey as the uh, yeah. the native bird as well. So did you know uh, that Benjamin Franklin is a loser? <laughs> <laughs> and some idiot USA, put a, and USA. some idiots put a treasure map yeah. on the back of the declaration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like juice and heat. Yeah. Okay. Before we go on, um, favorite favorite Fourth of July movie. Uh, fictional, not um, fictional. The Sandlot. Is it all real? Is it real? No, fictional, non-fictional. I don't care. You can go with the Patriot. You can go with the Sandlot. You can go with uh, Jaws. You can go with um, Jaws? just whatever you want. I am re I am reading Jaws. Yesterday was we watched it. We, we watched it yesterday. Yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yesterday was uh, the kids. The Kitzner boy. Kitzner. Kitzner boy. Uh, the anniversary of the day he died it was June 29th. So R.I.P. In, in real life, watch you pretty right in the face. In real in real life or no. I mean, I don't think it was real. I'm reading. No, I mean, it's it's a fictitious no, it, story. I'm, I'm just, reading the book. Yeah. I started reading the book yesterday, actually. TJ, you know, I listen. Okay, so we've Speaking talked about other. Bourbon. We've talked about other ah, people like this stuff. I, if they don't, <laughs> they just, they'll keep listening. Uh, have you ever listened to the? Uh, we've talked about them, but you that's need to listen to five the, minutes because that's how long it'll take TJ to finish the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I get interrupted like this, have you? You need to listen to those. Uh, don't go out there, guys. Uh, you need to listen to their Jaws podcast uh, that they just did. It was really, really good. Um, just it was cool to listen to some of the behind the scenes info. Like, I, do you ever watch like a director's cut of something, and you can kind of like hear the director say like, "Oh, this happened, that happened." Their podcast was great. So, do you check know it Steven out. Spielberg won't go back in the water because of that because he's afraid the sharks are going to have like a vendetta against him? Do they talk about that in your precious little podcast? I don't even have a horror movie podcast, and I knew that. Go, move up, move on. Freaking eagle. So, what was your favorite? Ah! Favorite. So, yours was Sandlot. Ben, this, favorite Fourth of July movie. Yeah. It's hard to argue that Independence Day is not uh, you know, uh, the speech from the, the president. It's not the so. truest, you know, version of Fourth of July. That's it. I was gonna go with. I like the Patriot a lot. Patriot's good. Patriot's you like good. the Patriot uh, Act? No, just the Patriot. <laughs> I do like National Treasure. I know that that's not a Fourth of July thing. Actually, I think yeah. it might it might be around Fourth of July. Does remember. Independence Day hold up? I say yes. Ben, what do you think? I think it holds up. This is not a movie review podcast. Yeah. Anyways, guys, <laughs> so, stupid eagle. All right. Yeah, I watched Independence Day and then right after Snowden. 
So Eagle Rares from Buffalo Trace Distillery. <laughs> it's 90 proof. Uh, we will review that on Thursday. It'll be a real review for Ben since last time we pranked him and told him it was uh, Basil Hayden, and it wasn't. It was Eagle Rare, and he gave it a really low score. It was really embarrassing. TJ and I had a hilarious time. It was April Fool's Day. Uh, but, yeah, so Eagle Rare, we have this. It's going to be our number one seed. It's about 30 to $35 MSRP. If you can find it, it's a really good bourbon. Uh, you guys will see on Thursday it'll score pretty high for us. We'll make the big board. Eh, we'll see. So that's number one seed. In the first round, it'll go up against our four seed, correct? TJ, and do you want to hold up the bottle while I'm doing this? Do we see these already? Loves his bottle. What do you no. mean? Mm. It's a tiny little bottle. But Bullet bourbon. Yeah, it's a 375. All right. So it's oh. bullet bourbon. Uh, it. Do you want me to do a TJ? Do you want? Yeah, it? go ahead. All right. I'm just. I'm rambling. You on. You have I have it all. Voice. Okay. I do not. Everyone loves hearing Brennan. So bullet has a mash bill of 68% corn, 28% rye, 4% malted barley. So I think that's fair to call it a high rye bourbon, right? Mm. Not, not like the Wild Turkey 101 BS. Um, this like Eagle Rare, it, like, like Eagle Rare, is bottled at 90 proof. Uh, it's from the Bullet Distillery, but is sourced. Uh, it is owned by Diageo, which is a huge, huge, huge whiskey distributor. has a ton of scotch and whatnot, too. I think they did the Game of Thrones scotch series, if you guys were into that sort of thing. Um, this was sourced by uh, from Four Roses for a while. That's no longer the case because Four Roses is no longer part of Diageo. Uh, the supplier is currently unknown. Uh, we'll see. Uh, they do some aging on site for single barrel. It is thirty dollars or so per bottle. Is that fair, TJ? Even though you have the the three seven five. Yeah, I think so. This is thirty dollars. I think yeah, you can find it for like twenty eight. Maybe, maybe yeah. a little bit less. Poof. Yeah, it's a toughie. It's a toughie. Ooh. Um, yeah. Interesting because the bourbon. When I mean, we're going to get into it, we're going to smell it and stuff. The bourbon is not anywhere near as appreciated as the rye. The rye is definitely from. MGP. Uh, that's pretty clear. It's from Indiana and people yeah. love the rye. Uh, the bourbon is a little bit more murky. Uh, do we want to go into the two and three seeds or do you want to do that, TJ? I'll let you do it. I'll stop talking. Yeah. What I will say is bullet bourbon, very, very standard, very entry, very low. The tenure, great. The tenure is fantastic. You can always find it. Um, I want to say that one's only. It's probably like 40 or 50. So maybe if I'd have uh, bullet. They have a, a cast strength one or a barrel strength one that's also very, uh, very oh. good. Oh, bullet tenure uh, pulls up at total wine right now for 45 bucks. So uh, not bad. Drizzly for 43. For tenure? Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's good. He has bullet, the, the basic one here at $19. Oh, that's a, that's a 375. Yeah. All right, all right, good. So the $30 is accurate. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank so. I don't know what our two seed and what our three seed is. We'll just go ahead and say this one's the two seed. Um, obviously, we're doing a little tournament here like we did for the Bottle and Bond um, Act. I'll do the two seed. You do the three because you have the bottle of it, Brendan. But uh, two seed is Jefferson's Reserve. Jefferson's Reserve is very old Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Very small batch. It is 90.2 proof. And what does what for the people at home? What does very small batch mean? Did you know Market. Jefferson was an idiot? <laughs> oh, oh, I will say. I mean, all right. So Thomas Jefferson apparently hated whiskey. He thought it was swill. He thought it was something that like the the poor people drink. He loved wine. I think he went broke. That wino, that freaking wino, went broke uh, because he's all French and loving France and whatnot. And he went broke uh, basically buying a bunch of wine. So he didn't even like whiskey. The people who do Jefferson's just named it Jefferson's because they want something that was very American and, you know, Thomas Jefferson, founding father or whatnot. Yeah, sure. Very American. But the man did not like whiskey. So he's as negative, as evil. Do you have just have like a negative point of view on all these bottles just to be, you know. Just I think he hates America. Anti, anti so, yeah. America on this day. Uh, You're uh, man, no, I mean, I like the one Russia that I, and drink some vodka. Yeah. Um, Russia. So, yeah, much like a lot of bourbon, the label – and the story behind them is completely false, but it makes it interesting. Like it's it's fun, so you should enjoy it for what it is. Um, in fact, on the back of the Jefferson little tin. Okay, so I want to. I do want to tell you this. I got this. I think this is like 40, 50 bucks. I got this for twenty five dollars on sale at Walmart. So go into your Walmart liquors and uh, you can find some good sales sometimes. It's a grab. It's a good grab. It's a good grab. Thirty thirty five dollars or so. According okay. to this. But still, I mean, you got it. What? Yeah, for, got rich. You still got like no, you got like a twenty percent discount. There. Yeah, so it's not good. bad. So, like the 
accomplished third president of the U.S., this Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey is complex, elegant, and sophisticated. Jefferson, Jefferson was the was president? Je oh, jeez. Oh, it's been Franklin. Know. It's been Franklin. Mm -hmm. was the Never mind. We're good. This is oh. the worst patriotic show I've ever heard in my life. Dude, how do you not know that? <laughs> Go watch Hamilton or something, bro. Like, jeez. Um, Brendan's throwing away a shot right now. Jefferson. Oh, because Bird. Yeah, no, I remember now. We're good. We're good. We're back in it. Sorry, this is Jefferson's weird. Reserve is allowed to age slowly and reach maturity naturally. So anyway, our two seed tonight, Jefferson's Reserve. Um, all right, I want to pass it back to the worst patriot of all time. Yeah. Um, ranking slightly behind John Wilkes Booth. Go ahead, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the rest of the review in bad Russian accent. Do it, uh, Borat. Real do it quick. Borat. No, you're canceled. Borat. <laughs> do it in Borat. It's great. Wawuiwa. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, the Jeffersons, real quick, as TJ neglected, he was too busy making fun of my patriotism. Um, my grandpa served in World War II, you bastard. Uh, 82.3 <laughs> proof for Jefferson's So your batch. grandpa wasn't a terrible American. No, no, this is 90. This is 90. Port, 90 port what? Well, when I, I researched that. it, 82.3. So well, there's a the sorts of bad stuff happening. That's good. It's going to be closer. 82. Let's well, 8 to 12 years as well for the Jefferson small batch. So I don't know what's happening now. I won't read the rest of it because this whole thing has just been skewed. Um, all right, so the last one, the three seed, 1776 James E. Pepper Bourbon. It's actually a really cool bottle, really handsome bottle. At the back, you see the original 13 colonies there on the snake. So you remember that 13? Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah, no, God, one, two, three. It's 13. No, there's only eight on here, though. It's born with the Republic, so that was not correct. Okay, well. Yeah, there's like no Georgia on here or anything like that. But anyway, so James E. Pepper... It's 100 proof. It's aged about three to four years, 57% corn. Yep, it's 39% e. rye. Uh, and it's named after James E. Pepper, who was, I think, a third generation master Adulterous. distiller. Uh, maybe, <laughs> probably. Um, of, the, uh, of the James E. Pepper distillery, uh, it was the rebrand of the old Pepper brand, which was apparently, allegedly, around like in the 1780s. They said during the Amer American Revolution. Was the American Revolution happening? In the 1780s, it was. It didn't go 14 years, did it? 1776 it? to the 80s. I know it's when the American Revolution was, and they did the Declaration of Independence. How long did the war go? When did the war go to? Oh, the American Revolution ended. If you had uh, Google, it ended in 1783. So, okay, yeah, so this was around then, allegedly. Brendan's um, never heard of America. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is either distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, which would imply MGP juice, or Bardstown Bourbon Company by them in Kentucky. So this is a blending. They're doing some aging there. I think they're starting to do their own stuff too. So uh, very much so a work in progress, but uh, they do lean heavily on you know a lot of the other stuff that bourbon does, which is. Uh, history and, and being very entrenched in American history. Like, like apparently James E. Pepper was instrumental in the bottle and bond act of 1897, which we documented before. So, but anyways, um, it's newer juice. Because that pepper, Peppers. Uh, because it's got a high rye and a lot of spice, would you say it's like red hot um, chili? Like, uh, does it have like a chili flavor to it or how hot is it? Are you say like red hot, like American summer is what you're trying to go for? Like red hot chili pepper. Peppers. I like the chili peppers. Okay, just checking. Um, that was give it away, give it away, give it away. No, <laughs> that was probably the best joke I've ever told on this. What show. a nightmare of a joke. Um, I don't, I don't get it. Still, like, what was the point? All yeah, right, let's let's, let's start let's, ranking these. Um, my name says Johnny. Let's start comparing these. <laughs> well, you uh, are who you are. Um, all right. So, if you had to compare Brendan to one patriotic character besides J John James. John Wills Booth. <laughs> his friends bro. called him. His friends called him James. They did. Old Jimmy. All right. So let's oh, go. I learned something new today about the. Sorry, never mind. That's not appropriate. No, it's fine. No, on topic, real quick. Apparently, a guy. I think it was like a general, someone high up, was in uh, the the booth when uh, Abraham Lincoln was shot in the head by by John Wilkes Booth and uh, James, if you will. And the guy tried to get Wilkes Booth as he ran away and couldn't get to him. And then the dude ended up becoming very, very depressed. Uh, and killed his wife and uh, tried to kill his kids. Um, they, someone stopped him, fortunately. But he so let's get into the tournament. Um, 
if you guys sign up for our Patreon, you can get that unedited version of what I just said, but we don't want to get canceled. So I had to like kind of take some stuff out. Um, one versus four. Let's start with the uh, Eagle Rare and Bullet. We'll, we'll go Challenger first. Um, let's let's get this Eagle Rare and Bullet uh, matchup underway. Bullet's nose compared to the Eagle Rare is disgusting. The Bullet smells like peanut butter. It's mm. got that. It's got that uh, old tub a tub tub nasty funk to it. Maybe it's the high rye, uh, but I'm not a fan. Yeah, the the Eagle Rare nose is so warm and inviting. So sweet, so caramelly. Mm-hmm. And the bullet one sucks. The bullet nose is not great. It's like pickly, isn't it? It's almost got like this pickle, briny, harsh. It's definitely a sour note. Yeah. Sour. How can this we is... make sour sound great? Um, like a sour <laughs> apple. Sweet tarts. Sweet tarts. Star, <laughs> it's like a, starburst. It's a warhead. It's oh, warhead. it is. It, and, and the taste, I don't know if you guys have tasted it. The taste is very bitter as well. It's better than the nose. It actually kind of works. It gets some pepperiness and like it's it's okay. No. But man, like compared to the Eagle Rare, this is. This it's is, like all pepper. It's like James E. Pepper. Yeah. I was going to make that joke, but I had a mouthful of Eagle Rare. I like, oh, your, tur- I like your turkey noise better. You didn't do the turkey noise for Elliot. I did, and I thought of that like yesterday after we tweeted it out. Yeah, just call him right now on speakerphone and do like, turkey. Oh, he picks up the phone and then give him the that. turkey. <laughs> yeah. I probably think it's like work related, some kind of emergency. Oh. Why is he calling me at nine p.m. on a Thursday and then you just do the turkey? <laughs> um, yeah, the Eagle Rare is better here. Do we have any other thoughts or do we? Just no, just I, I, it's like not even. It's not even worth spending Eagle time on bullet. Rare. You have a cool bottle, but you suck. Cool bottle. Mm. I mean, it's okay. It's a it's a cool old west bottle. You've seen a lot of movies. Like people want this to throw back. Yeah, I, I just like that it looks like a flask. I, I, that's my big selling point on the bottle. I, I do like the bottle a lot. Oh my yeah. god! The, all right, so here we go. Two versus three, right? And we're on James Pepper, James E. Pepper, seventeen seventy six versus Jefferson's Reserve. Very old Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Very small batch. I know what nose I like better. The Jefferson. Jefferson. Jeff yeah, is the He's pepper coming. is like. You're, so you're saying this one's coming home? We'll, we'll see. Huh. Huh. It's a it's a Hamilton joke. You uncultured swine wouldn't get it. A Hamilton joke. Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, there's a song called Jefferson's Coming Home. It's like when he's coming home from. France. Oh, you mean the beginning of Act Two? Yes. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's not turn this. Yeah. Into a, let's not turn this into a cabinet battle. Hmm. Not as good. The um the James <laughs> Pepper is it bad, but so when you when you Who's call it James, 1776. 1776 isn't bad. When you think of the I name nut. Pepper, I, you get nut. <laughs> I, bet you do. I, <laughs> I feel like this I feel like the 1776 is like Heaven Hill or uh no, it's James E. Pepper. I or, get, G, or uh Jim Beam. How, I mean, I'm it's nuts. definitely a little nuttiness. I don't get that out, but the bullet was so nutty that I'm I'm getting like melon. Get like, nutty like a, on like a nasty, bullet? Yeah. Yeah, like that peanut butter funk. Oh, I got peanut butter sour. Uh, it is sour. Um, but oh. no, on the pepper, on the, or it says 7076. I get, I get a I little get, like dark chocolate from the uh, Jefferson. The Jefferson is yeah. actually pretty pleasant. The 1776 yeah. isn't bad, though. It's just different. There's like a, it's definitely spice. Like I get a ton of spice on the 1776. Yeah. You, I think that's a power suggestion because it's called pepper. No, it's not. Mm. I'm just smelling If this spice. was James E. Salt, then you'd have been like a little salty. Mm, so it almost tastes, it tastes briny to me. I get pickle, briny pickle. Uh, From the which pepper? One? Yeah. Which on, one? on a 1776 pepper. Yeah. Peppers. That Jefferson's not bad. No, the Jefferson, I think, is much Jefferson is definitely better than the Pepper. Yeah, side. it is. I agree. Uh, we'll yeah. move on. But I think as far as we've had them ranked so far, and we'll see with the head-to-head, but like the bullet was my, the least favorite for me. The Pepper is just young, I think. I think it's three to four years. If you give that six to seven years, I think it'll start kind of like mellowing out and getting more oaky tannins and vanilla. I think it'll be okay. The bullet, I just there's no excuse for that. That's swill to me. Sorry if you like it, um, but get better taste. So let's go to one versus two, right? I think we have it seated. Uh, appropriately one versus two who did this seating by the way you did tj good job excellent 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 um it was a bold choice to put eagle rare at number one uh, yeah no no one saw that coming so i the nose definitely is eagle mm-hmm. i appreciate you guys' adoration 
and uh, we can move on. Yeah, the nose better on the Eagle Rare. The Jefferson. Mm. Are you guys not getting like it? Like even that one? Why am I keep t- like pickles all damn day? Pickles. What pickle are you talking about on the seven, on the Jefferson? I've got it on the Jefferson nose. I've gotten it uh, on the. What do you wash your Glen Karens with? Oh, pickle brine. Oh, there you go. I kind of got some of that pickle on that uh, on that uh, seventeen seventy six. I don't get it as much here on. The aftertaste. I, that's the rye spice. I think that's the high rye for me. That's how I'm interpreting it. Is briny. Yeah, I mean, it's Eagle Rare all day. Jefferson's good, but Eagle Rare is it's just better product. Yep. Yeah, it's better. It's smoother. There's a reason why research. it was marked down on sale. You know, the Jeffersons. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is not bad, though. It's not. No, bad. it's not. It's not bad for twenty five I mean, bucks. It's great. Yeah, the, what you're spending on that versus the other two versus the James E. Pepper and the Bullet, like that's clearly a better value. Yeah. Um, now, here's the question. Would you rather spend $25 on the Jefferson mm-hmm. or let's say $35 on Eagle Rare? Probably the Eagle Rare. So. Oh, yeah. Definitely the Eagle Rare. 10 bucks. All right. What if we mix, though? Oh, no. Is that You just ruined Eagle Rare. Probably, but I have like three more bottles. So Did you mix I... Eagle Rare with Bullet? No, Jefferson. Oh. I threw the Bullet um, on my kid and said, get out of the room. Oh my God. Um, we've been doing bullet bourbon. No one's made a bullet, uh, Abraham Lincoln joke yet. That's cause we're not bad Patriots, John. Um, yeah. we don't like dead presidents. Like some people. Most no, I meant, I meant the song. I meant the song. Dead Pre- you know, um, the band. Yeah. Eagle rare, our champion, the, okay. The most patriotic whiskey. Is it the most patriotic whiskey? I'm asking. Mm-hmm. Some other contenders. American whiskey by um, uh, Victor's, Victor's, all, Victor's uh, blended or on blended horse, uh, horse soldier. Horse soldier. That's got to be the most American. The Matt, like the the guy, is like part of it. Yeah, you know? a soldier. Yeah, that seems like you got to kind of go yeah. with that one. Um, there is one that I've seen at Walmart that is like called American whiskey or so it's super mm-hmm. american bourbon it's super they're just going and it's apparently like 80 proof and they're just going for like lowest common denominator no, no. there yeah no i would say um, horse is probably the most patriotic yeah but, most patriotic is, is what i was going for so yeah in this lineup though it's probably eagle rare i think eagle like rare best. eagle rare might be the most patriotic in general like that might get my vote no. um, horse soldier horse soldier the and most. because they, they have the stars around it too. Mm-hmm. So it's I've heard of stars, yeah. The it's very American. It's bold. Oh yeah. The back of the the back of the bottle. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The cornerstones of the birth of a nation, epitomized by the American bold eagle. That nation has come to represent the freedom, spirit, and independence of the individual, giving the world products and innovations that are uniquely its own. One such innovation was Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, early Kentucky. Settlers created bourbon, the true American spirit, in the late 1700s by practice and protected by law. No other distilled spirit adheres to standards as strict as those established for Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And a few other and few other whiskeys can even can offer even a glimpse of the great whiskey making found in Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare, 10-year-old Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, has a sweet, oaky nose, full, complex body, reminiscent of a fine port wine. The rare this rare whiskey is best served mm-hmm. neat or over ice, which how what else are you gonna do? Put it in Coke. Of course, feel free to drink Eagle Rare in such classic con- cocktails as Manhattan or whiskey sour. Listen, yeah, if going- I see anyone serving this in a whiskey sour, Eagle Rare, I will uh, decapitate a bald eagle in front of them. No, that's Ooh. a federal offense. Nope, not gonna do it. Never mind. Protection. Do you know they're dumb birds? <laughs> <laughs> um What'd you guys learn today? I learned that Brendan hates America. Yeah. Um, Jeez. So I don't know. Brendan, most patriotic whiskey to you. I'm going to go rare. Ben's going horse soldier. Horse soldier. I, I feel like after my bald eagle slander, I really need to uh, make some amends here and say that uh, Eagle Rare is the number one most patriotic, most American bourbon out there. Hmm. Sorry, Ben. Dun, 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 dun. What's, the, what's the least patriotic whiskey that you can think of? Least patriotic whiskey? Mm-hmm. Mm. Redwood Empire. Oh, Redwood Emperor. It's got like red and commie. 
I think Buffalo Trace is an underrated patriotic one too. You know, just because like, oh, build me a home where the Buffalo roam. So I don't know, somewhat patriotic there too. It's oh, like probably, early. You know what? I got it. Probably Rebel Yell. Ooh, they literally, really? you know, kind of, you know, rebelled against America. Not to get too into the weeds there, but yeah, probably Rebel Yell. And it's named after the yell that the Rebel soldiers would would yell going into battle. So yeah, that'd be mine. Sorry Not to, to be a there. Confederate sympathizer, but like they oh, no, 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 I, there is no least least patriotic whiskey. I mean, Brandon, Brandon got, Brandon it's got to be one? a scotch. At least patriotic whiskey is a scotch. That's, That's it. Yeah, hey, scotch. you should have said bourbon because a bourbon has to be made in America. No, yeah. no I did say bourbon. He just changed it. He just changed it. Got he said whiskey because he couldn't complete the assignment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now on. Okay, so we finished up a segment last week. Um, mm-hmm. that was our replacement segment. Now we're going to replace that segment with something new. I think what we're replacing it with is I think we're bringing back everybody's favorite King of the Hill. But oh, this time we are doing Scotch it. No, just kidding. Rise. We're doing Rye King of the Hill um, because we want something that we're going to enjoy. So yes, I don't know if it'll be next week. I don't know if it'll be the week after, but very soon we will bring back King of the Hill. We'll see if something can make it through the gauntlet that is our King of the Hill. Um, something else that we have gotten some requests on and some people have talked about. We've got some folks doing some blending on our – they're tagging us in on Twitter. Um, you really need to go follow us on Twitter. Go to Bourbon on a Budget on, our, on Twitter. Um, a couple of guys that we follow are doing some blending. If you – I'll shout his Twitter out, Seminole CPA. So Seminole, S-E-M-I-N-O-L-E, CPA, does a ton of blending. Um, and tax work if you need help. <laughs> and he's really like, I, I don't mean this like offensive, but like he's really nerding out on this. Like he's got like spreadsheets out and he's like yeah. mixing it really good. It sounds like a CPA. It is really cool. Go check it out. Um, I want to get him on the show to, to talk about some of the blending, what he's found, what he's done from it. The only thing I've ever blended, guys, is that uh, 1910, 1920, but that was just like a mitt, you know, like a very common. He's yeah. making like, he's making poor man's Pappy. He's making poor man's um, E.H. Taylor barrel proof. He's making poor mm. man's four grain um, E.H. Taylor. Really, really cool stuff. And then just kind of experiment with some wild stuff all over the place, seeing what comes out, seeing what different percentages do. Um, it's really, really neat. If if Brendan and I didn't do like eighteen podcasts combined, maybe we'd have time to do some experiments too. Seems but, like a uh, Patreon kind of deal. Yeah, they've also we've had a lot of people ask about um, different finishes, whether it be another mm-hmm. barrel. Um, you know, we've talked about Woodford Double Oak. We have talked about the nineteen ten. We've talked about Elijah Craig uh, toasted barrel, different things like that. I will tell you, out of those three, I think the nineteen ten is the best of them, and and it's the cheapest slash easiest to find it's a Only little bit cheaper to find out, TJ. Only yeah. way to find out. it's a little cheaper than the uh than the night or uh 1910 is a little cheaper than the uh double oaked uh, by woodford um but we might have to have a little toasty tournament soon a toasty uh, tournament i think we have to do that I, before we get the king of the hill going maybe right maybe right? We could do that next week yeah maybe we could do that and then do king of the hill i think All that right. the toasty tournament would be a little bit more fun than this one where eagle rare was just dominant i think yeah. the other one the other one would be fun maybe we do that one blind the old yeah. toasty tourney um but some some good good stuff there that elijah craig toasted barrel i had some last night it's not bad by any means but i do think it's overhyped i'm not as big of an elijah craig fan um i had the 1910 in that back-to-back nights and and, and really the 1910 blew it away so um mm-hmm. obviously i knew that i was looking at the bottles but we'll see if I think the same thing after uh, after the tournament, which may be blind. Um, okay, now really to our favorite segment. My Pursuits favorite. And purchases. Who wants to start us out here? Uh, I can go real quick. I haven't actually um, – I don't want to – yeah, I don't want to get myself in trouble. 
it has not arrived yet <laughs> via the mail. Mm. Uh, I mean, not the mail uh, through someone dropping it off to me. But I did procure two different type of whiskeys. One was on my list uh, for a couple of weeks now. And we had actual multiple listeners uh, go out of their way to look for it for me. I really appreciate it. Finally found it uh, at a pretty decent price. And that was the Lagavulin 11 Nick Offerman edition. Uh, so it's got Nick Offerman from, you know, you know him as Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. Uh, I had the original. The GOAT. The GOAT. <laughs> yes. yes. So Talk about there. a patriot. Talk about an absolute Oh, patriot. my God. Maybe yeah. the best patriot ever. Better than Thomas Jefferson, for sure. Well, um, better than a bald eagle, that's for sure. Well, I mean, yeah. most things what are stupid eagles. Um, it's finished in a Guinness cask. Uh, so Ooh. I'm very much so looking forward to seeing what the Guinness uh, stout casks. I know what it does to Jameson. It makes it really interesting and complex. Lagavulin's already a really smoky, peaty, uh, briny scotch. So I'm interested to see what the, the Guinness smoothness does to that. That'll be interesting. And then I also got a bottle that I've been looking for for a little while uh, as well, WB Saffle, which has been out for a few years now. I had a chance to buy it a couple years ago. didn't do it because it was like about 80, 90 bucks for a 375. I ended up doing it. It's uh, pretty much Kentucky or Kentucky. Uh, wild turkey juice uh, and various various different ages in there. But it gets really good reviews. It's a really cool bottle. Uh, a little expensive for uh, half a bottle, but uh, one that I'm looking forward to. Because, uh, again, uh, upside is it's high proof wild turkey stuff. Downside, I don't really see one. It's got a cool bottle to it. Um, It's funny that you bring up Ron Swanson. Do you know who uh, John Proctor is? Is that name familiar at all? Brandon? It is familiar, but I'm trying to think of where, like, is a historical figure? No, he He's works a proctologist. at... Oh, gosh. A, a proctologist. <laughs> he, uh, he works at FSU. He's the head diving coach. Um, no, the John Proctor's definitely a... Well, not yeah, the one I was talking about. He's from the Salem Witch Trials. I knew it was some historical figure. Yeah, okay, also, we're... terrible patriot. Um, so he works at FSU. We talked with him today because he is... Speaking of 4th of July, he is going to Tokyo um, as Katrina Young's coach. Um, yes. FSU diver. Um, she graduated from FSU, going back to her second Olympics. We chatted with him today on the uh, on the other pod that I do. He had a life-size cutout of Ron Swanson in his office. So the next time I'm on campus, like that's I got to go check that out. And so we asked him about that. We asked him off the cuff who the greatest uh, Patriots, fictional Patriots were. Um, obviously Ron Swanson probably being the best, mm -hmm. uh, but do you guys have an answer for that off the cuff? Nothing to think about. A like fictional Patriot. Yeah. Captain America would, would be up there. Right. Um, yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, Tony Olive Stark one. gave his life. Tony Stark alert. He did yeah. give his life. Oh, it's been long enough now. Uh, yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, trying to think. you could use any of those people in the movies that we talked about, obviously. Yeah. Um, oh, who did you just think of? Because I, yeah, I you was gonna, I was gonna say Patton after the movie, but obviously he was a real life general. <laughs> oh I thought, should I just God. keep yeah. going down on being oh, stupid tonight no. or not? Yeah, General Patton, yeah, greatest uh, fake person. I really liked, uh, you know, FDR. He was awesome. He was fake. <laughs> oh, that honest Abe man. He was a character. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, great, at, great at killing vampires. <laughs> <laughs> that's on netflix right now and i'm really tempted to watch it but i'm also pretty sure i won't get an hour and a half of my life back too so yeah. we'll see um all right uh, ben do you have a submission for your favorite uh fake patriot not Will fake smith patriot. independence day <laughs> all right very good uh <laughs> pursuits and purchases ben I, I see your question in, in the chat i don't have the, it on me but talk to us about the uh the light whiskey yes the, uh, so jacket. i was able to pick up a couple uh couple store picks this past week um if you don't follow us on instagram you probably should because it was store pick saturday and i grabbed a bottle of gas bars jack daniels single barrel barrel strength bourbon Ooh. right right mm -hmm. hearing good things oh. about the barrel strength Ooh, it's a good pop it's gonna be the best thing we've drank tonight so far this is an fyi so i'm gonna sample it right now oh i gave myself a lot uh oh um but we Can grabbed this what do you say so you can't hide money. Oh, I forgot. I also That's got right. Elijah Craig barrel proof oh. uh, from a bet I won with my buddy. So a banana, so much banana in this. It's crazy. Uh, all Jack Daniels is very banana. -y. This is very banana. 
And like, the more you go like through, the more the banana, like a banana foster kind of. This is like a banana pudding kind of like. Ooh. Yeah, maybe a little. Mm. A little vanilla wafer in there, a little little vanilla wafer, a little wafer wafe. Yeah, this is this is the best thing we've had tonight so far. Anyway, uh, so we grabbed two bottles of that, one for TJ, one for myself. In addition, we hit up another store, Liquor Depot. Shout out Liquor Depot. They had a barrel pick of light whiskey from the Cat's Eye Distillery and Obtanium. Right, there, that's the the brand, and it was uh, like a hazmat pick and if you don't know what hazmat means uh there are legal flying regulations that the tsa imposes about whether or not something could be on a plane because of its flammability anything that is bottled at more than 140 proof <laughs> is labeled hazardous material and our bottle was 140.4 proof and it is a good it's a good bottle. It's a light whiskey. It's not a bourbon. So understand there are differences, but it's 13 years old, 140.4 proof. And Jake, if you listen to this, you're going to try it at Christmas. Brian, if you listen to this, you're trying it at Christmas. It's great. Maybe before then, because I really want to drink it, but it's great. So, and it'll kick you in the pants later that night because it's 140 proof. It sounds like light whiskey and 140 proof sounds like an awful combination to me. I'll tell you like what, it drinks. At least as easy as uh, this Jack Daniels at 130 proof. Wow. It is good. And TJ's tried his. We tried out. We tried both of these together the, uh, one night, and TJ will give you his little review. But that's what I picked up this week. I'm pretty stoked. Damn, yeah, no. your review little. Oh wow. Um, no, but it was really really good. I thought both of them were good, different. I thought the uh, the Jack. I thought they both had a lot of chocolate characteristics um, to them, which was kind of different. But uh, the the light whiskey was kind of buttery, which was good. It was obviously very thick, had a high viscosity or mouth feel, as Brendan likes to say. Feel? Um, Sorry. So mouth feel? Both of those were really, really good. I, I went and picked up. I had a, a – oh, I, I got these in the mail today. Um, this is an American Prairie wow. High West uh, expression. Wow. Um, finished in a Banyuls, Banyuls. Ban Banyu you said it was a wine. I need to look up the wine. Spell it for me, no. TJ. B A N Y U L S. That's um, very like a, Christmas. It's a it's a bourbon enthusiast pick. Um, and then this is a smoke wagon small batch. So shout out Joe. Um, got me a couple of these. Just had them shipped to me through his uh, through his membership there. So excited about both of those. Uh, we have a box from them that's missing. There were supposed to be two boxes delivered today. Only one was. So um, we'll see if they mm. get that fixed. I know they listen. So guys get that fixed by the next time we record. So I don't have to crap on you guys again. Uh, uh -oh. I went and picked up last week. I went and picked up um, my bottle of old Rip Van Winkle that I got out of the ABC vault. I don't mm -hmm. know if we talked about that the last time that we were on or not. I can't remember if I told you guys that I old got that. In. But an old Rip Van Winkle, I picked up that bottle. I think um, Old Rip is, I think the same company that does the Old Rip line also did the WB Staffle. Like they're basically like doing mm. a bunch of reintroductions of types of uh, styles of bourbon. So interesting. So interestingly enough, Ben wants me to flip that bottle of Old Rip Van Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I just mean like turn it upside down. Oh, um, okay. That's fine then. But as opposed to turning it upside down, I'm also trying to buy a house right now. And mm -hmm. so if I get that house, I am definitely breaking the bottle. Uh, across the like the, the threshold bow. of the house, yeah, the that to to sell to celebrate the the purchase of the house. Um, just kidding. I think if we get the house, I think I'm going to drink it celebrate. all in one yeah. night with my um, one year old. Um, so, <laughs> oh, um, another pursuit in purchase. That's a very no. inappropriate joke. Also, stupid eagles. Uh, TJ, you came in clutch and you found a bourbon that I've been looking for for a little while for me. Um, it is. A hang on, I got a bullet. Bullet? No, it's not bullet. Do not say that. I always, uh, it, it's not tectonic, tatatonic, tatatonic. Um, catatonic. No, no, no. Tectonic whiskey. Uh, so it's from New York, and yeah. this is like days before I go up to New York, and I've been saving my budget for it. And one of the things I want to find was the tectonic whiskeys, yes. a maple syrup cask finished. Bourbon. All right. I've seen it before. I passed out it like before, like in Georgia, like $45. I regretted it. Uh, TJ found that, but this is a little special, isn't it, TJ? A little different. I 
think so. What's different um, about it? Well, no, I tried it's to set you up for it. It's a store pick. It's by a group of people. It's cast it's a, strength. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks, Ben. Yeah, good job. Ben's not shittered right now. Sorry. TJ's. He's, I was like, what? Is, I was like, I'm paying attention. Right. Yeah. It is cast strength at 65%. So it's it's hefty. It's like 120 proof. And I think uh, I've had their like their standard bourbon, right. which is actually pretty good. Uh, 90, 90 proof. But I think that the maple cask finish with uh, the high proof is going to be pretty interesting. So thank you, TJ. I owe you. My pleasure. Um, you actually do owe me. It's yeah, like literally I owe you. Two, $200 right now. That seems um, happy America. That's Inflation. Price. Inflation. Suck it. Yeah. Um, we just survived a pandemic, Brendan. How insensitive can you be? Market value. Um what market? <laughs> ben, thank you for listening and paying attention to my bourbon. News. All right. Uh, all right. It. That's enough of that. Um, anything else before we get out of here and go, gentlemen? When no, this is you been- on Thursday. Uh, oh, oh. Ca-ca-ca-ca! Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare. A redo for Ben after his blunder on April <laughs> Fool's Day. God, we've been doing this podcast since April. That's just. Yeah. yeah. Happy Fourth of July! It's three months. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been been three months, three guys. Months in my life. Um, happy Fourth of July! Happy America's birthday! Um, if you have any access to tell Brendan how terrible of an American he is, uh, whether it be through a message board, through social media, or if you'd like his cell phone number, please shoot me a message, and I'm happy to give that out. Um, let's let Brendan know that he's terrible. If you and, want to uh, throw an egg at his house, his address is seven four four two. How'd you, how'd you know that? <laughs> Just kidding. It's 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> That's a stupid house. That's a dumb house. I'll dare that Don't house. Don't judge me laugh. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for myself, <laughs> TJ Pinscher, Brandon Sinone, and Ben Cock. Did you we'll say you guys- myself? TJ Pinger, like as you're identifying. He is so drunk right now. That's how, that's how I've said every – that's how that's how I always say it. Is that not right? For myself, Ben, TJ, Brendan, said, and Ben, and myself. I like when you're kind of – TJ is stupid, stupid as an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely the title of the show, stupid as an eagle. <laughs> We get canceled on for the July. Stupid as an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> for the Some idiots guys that, get legitimately insulted that I made fun of an eagle. Oh, yeah. That's a message board post right there. Uh, for the three idiots that run this thing, we'll see you guys on Thursday. Oh, God, so recorded. <laughs> Myself. Cheers. TJ. Ben. Brendan. Cheers. Cheers. And myself. Cheers. And myself. Cheers. Should have done the eagle. The eagle knows Cheers. the next one. Cheers! Gah! <laughs>